to be honest, I'm learning all the time because you never know everything and it's changing. And But um, absolutely, I think, you know, education is key, educating our kids, our future generations, um, finding the tools that are fun, exciting, having fun, being creative. I, yeah. you know, it's, it's, life is so much better like that. Hello, hello, and welcome aboard another episode of the Captain's Lifestyle Podcast. Now, before we dive into today's interview, I want to let you know that this episode is brought to you by the Captain's Lifestyle Program, where we are leading the future of business. Our mission is to help impact-driven entrepreneurs achieve balance and accelerate growth by optimizing their health and productivity. Over the course of 12 weeks, you'll get to work with me one-on-one as we cover everything you need to know to take you and your brand from average to excellent. But don't just take my word for it. Head over to thecaptainslifestyle.com to hear some of our amazing testimonials from former clients. All right, now on to today's interview. I want to start off this episode with a quote, which is, I do and I understand. The ancient Chinese philosopher Confucius expressed his belief in the importance of learning from experience. He said, I hear and I forget. I see and I remember. I do and I understand. My guest on today's episode is Edward Andre Hessig. He is the founder and president of Art Venture, whose mission is to offer eco friendly tools and solutions to provide hands on experimentation. During 25 years, that's right, 25 years of traveling in over 50 countries, Edward had the chance to work with amazing individuals and companies to design and launch unique products in the art materials world. Rich with this broad experience in manufacturing, marketing, and a constant desire to create innovative, fun, and functional products, Edward decided to pursue this wonderful adventure with a primary focus on sustainable initiatives inspiring creativity. Edward, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you very much, Shayla. And you took off the glasses. Where'd they go? <laughs> you got to pop those back sure on. I wasn't sure if I was going to start with it. I didn't yeah. want to scare everyone. No, people got to see this. This is amazing. <laughs> For everybody listening to the audio version right now, you got to hop over to the YouTube show and check these things out. So let's let's start here. Talk to us a little bit about this creation. These are. Um... Uh, glasses that wait, that you put them together, so it's the same principle for the whole line. You build it, and then um, they are they've got lenses there. I'm actually missing a couple here, but you've got lenses that turn and allows you to sort of see the world in different colors. Uh, <laughs> I found out that actually these are uh, used by um, uh, op- optometrics or people who check the eye for color blindness. Really? Uh, so I thought, okay, this is, you know, I, I can play with it. But I think they kind of, I love the the sort of the whimsical, you know, steampunk look. I, I yeah. Think they're, they're really... Are you familiar with Burning Man? Yeah. Yeah, I, I've never been myself, but that that's like something perfect for, for Burning Man. <laughs> and the, the gears work and everything too. That's oh, yeah, yeah. Cool. So, yeah, so when, when you do what you turn one, if I can get it to turn, the other one turns as well. So you got you got little gears at the top. <laughs> and so they they the, the colors turn at the same time you you're gonna have to switch out some of the lenses so you get red and blue and then you can exactly 3D. so you can change then here i'm i'm seeing you know red and yellow uh-huh. uh but i could you know change it to see all red or whatever you know so wow yeah yeah it's fun it's fun they're fun to you know all these products i mean the whole point is you have fun building them they're intricate they're not easy i mean it's not you know it's it's not easy uh they're not toys or whatever, but then, but then you can have, you can actually do stuff. I mean, I'm hoping to show you some other stuff. They're like different, you know, they, they, the idea is they're beautiful when they're finished as well. You can lay them and just, you know, enjoy them. And that's the whole idea of that. I believe in the product life cycle, we're in such a consumer society where we take something, use it and throw it away. And it's just like single life cycle. Yeah. And we've got to get away from that uh, in our, in our purchase behavior, in our, in every aspect, we've got to think, rethink about the whole product life cycle and think, okay, I'm going to make something that actually is going to bring, carry on and not just end up in a dump somewhere with all the plastic and everything. That's, that's the thing I, I you know, I think we, we got to change our attitude. So, yeah. And, and I agree. That's one of the reasons why this podcast exists is to promote sustainability. 
And I, I agree. We, we have s- such a huge problem with overconsumption. I think so many people are just not aware the, of the impact that their buying decisions have. And I know that's one of the big reasons why you wanted to rethink the product lifestyle and move away from plastic. So talk about your decision to, to do that. So I've always thought of, I love nature. So I love a beautiful beach. And with, 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 you know, with my kid, what I, what I do on the summer when it's a gray day, whatever, when, um, when we go on the beach, instead of just laying on the beach and there's nothing to do and they were bored, I said, well, okay, next time, you know, and we came with plastic bags. And I made a, a competition with them to grab as much trash on the beach as possible. And whoever got the biggest bag won, you know, and it was like a challenge to each other. But the whole point was, it's so nice when you arrive to a beach or a forest or, and it's clean. And so, so the environment has always been at the core. But I thought I'm, I'm a, a product creator. I'm a, a marketing guy. And I always wanted to do something. And I come from the art material world where, you know, I manage lines of paints and brushes and papers and really high-end fine art material. Uh, but and at the same time, artists really care about the environment. In general, they're more receptive, you know, they're more, um, and yet there was no line really just focused on that. So I thought, you know, I got to get into that direction. I didn't want to get into art material just to compete. But as I did my investigation, I thought, you know what, there's something this and the other thing is my kid was in front of Zoom during this pandemic, like all the kids watching Zoom videos one after the other. And this is where the whole thing I do and I learn, you know, I, I touch and I learn because it's got to be a hands-on experience. You know, you got to touch something. You got to play with it. Uh, the, the texture, I mean, the you know, tactile. You, le- you learn about spiders, right? So you're going to learn this guy. Oh, look at you're that. You're going to wind it up. Right? You're going to build this, this baby, right? You're going to wind it up and then... You're going to set it in motion oh, that and it's going to, it's going to, a little bit, you know, and this is, <laughs> <laughs> so this is more fun. If I put it on the table, it's going to come crawling on me, but uh, and it did. <laughs> but um, yeah, so I think that the whole point is you can have really educational products that are sustained and, and you can't do plastic. I, I was back to the sustainability. Um, we got to move away from that. I mean, we got to move, not that current plastics are bad. I mean, I think we're going in the right direction in many areas. Um, with you know recyclable and recycled plastics and so on, but I think if from the start we eliminate the source, it's already going to be a big you know improvement. Um, and um, so that's why I thought, okay, wood FSC certified because it stands for Forest Stewardship Council. So that's wood that's coming from forests that are well managed. Basically, you cut a tree, you plant one or two or whatever. So it's it's well managed forestry. You don't just you know like happens in some countries where it's it's yeah. a real mess yeah well um, you're, you're just answering all the questions that i, that I was gonna have for you okay <laughs> podcast over but yeah sorry that, no that's totally fine so you you knew you didn't want to use plastic which i agree i, I live here in southern california you're you're from france yep. where do you live currently i live in princeton new jersey so okay. i'm uh yep yeah so I'm, i've been here for now 13 years so I, yeah so I don't know how it is on the beaches there. I imagine it's similar to California, at least some of the beaches here. You go again, like you said, just wanting to have a good time, enjoy the beach, enjoy nature, but it's littered with plastic. Even if you don't see it like right away, if you look closer, like you actually look and sift through the sand, yeah. there's microplastics, there's cigarette butts, pieces of styrofoam. It's horrible. It's terrible. And, and that's what we see. But then, you know, you go out in the middle of the Pacific Ocean and it's everywhere. It's in the rivers. It's in it's in the plants and the animals and the fish. I mean, now there's, you know, there's there's very strong evidence. It's not just a, you know, a rumor. It's it's a reality. And we no. and we the thing is, we can fix it in a smart, aesthetic way. We just we're smart. We can do it. We totally as a, you know, as a mankind, we can absolutely can fix that and actually have better life for it. Yes. Um, you know, so I'm I'm uh, I'm big on on recycling and try to think the way through. I'm I'm still learning, to be honest. I'm learning all the time because you never know everything and it's changing. And but um, absolutely, I think you know education is key. Educating our kids, our future generations, um, finding the tools that are fun, exciting, having fun, being creative. I, yeah. you know, it's it's life is so much better like that. I agree, and and that's why I love that there's people like you out there with these companies 
and that's that's why I love having this podcast because I get to help spread this information of sustainability. Like, yes, you're right. We can create a sustainable world where it's better than the world we're living in now. We can thrive synergistically with Mother Nature. It doesn't have to be one or the other. Absolutely, absolutely. I yeah. could not agree more. Absolutely, and that stereotypical idea is you know like ecology or sustainability is at the opposite of whatever economic booming or whatever employment is is i believe is wrong it's it's there's just there's actually many other ways we can do it that basically sums up the captain's <laughs> lifestyle you know uh, or the captain's lifestyle program it's it's where i i coach these impact driven entrepreneurs and our our tagline our purpose is leading the future of business because i think to your point, I think a lot of the reasons why these founders and CEOs of these companies, why they don't switch to a more sustainable uh, alternative, whether it's plastic or whatever it is, is because they think the cost is going to be too much because plastic is so ridiculous, ridiculously cheap. But it's not just about the cost. It's like the ethics of the thing, right? But uh, yeah, I've interviewed plenty of sustainability brands on here and you can still create a success, a financially successfully business while being sustainable and giving back. You can have the best of both worlds. Absolutely. And, and some big companies have understood that and doing it really well. I mean, I'm right when I started my company, I said, okay, the first thing I gotta, I gotta do, I gotta put it in my DNA. It's in my mission, but I, it has to be part of the DNA of who I am, but also what my company our venture is. And I thought, all right, well, I looked around and I found this uh, nonprofit called 1% for the Planet. Yep. And I like what they do. It was founded by um, uh, Schwinar, uh, the guy who founded Patagonia, I think. And, and it's an aggregate of numerous companies where you commit to giving 1% of your top line, not, you know, of your, you know, your top line to the environment. And I, I love the idea that, and then you pick, you know, you want to protect the oceans or whatever, but you really make a commitment. So whatever you do, you're going to keep. And for me, uh, that was one element, you know, the source, the wood. Um, that was the whole, um, the whole idea to 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 be coherent with myself, yeah. and that's what I'm loving. I'm loving in this entrepreneurial journey, which is full of questions and challenges, and I mess up once in a while, yeah. or, you know, on a regular basis, whatever. I mean, I'm, as I learn, as I go, and overall, it's so exciting that you can always learn, you can improve, you can get better, you can be honest, you can be true about yourself, and you know. So that's just the ultimate satisfaction when you've been a corporate animal all your life and you know you were a good soldier. Well, I'm still isn't, a good soldier, but <laughs> isn't it so much more fulfilling to do this sustainably to to inspire creativity and creation sustainably? That just sounds amazing. Yeah, yeah. Um so you talked about some big businesses are are moving towards the sustainability aspect. I think and there's data that backs this up that in the future, every single business will be sustainable. It just as a, a world like we just have to go that way because <laughs> the way business is run now and with this overconsumption, it's it's 100 percent not sustainable. Like it's only a matter of time before everybody starts to realize. And I think I've said this on so many podcasts, a lot of consumers are starting to become aware of their buying decisions. Exactly. And we, those the power that, is in our hands. Absolutely. Yes. You vote with your dollars. And those select few who understand that, they're willing to spend much more on a company or a brand who is sustainable that does support their values as opposed to a, a company who's just in business for the bottom line. Absolutely. Absolutely. But it, it, it comes down to the everyday little things, you know, oh, can I can I walk or cycle there? Or do I take my car? Uh, do I buy my vegetables in that plastic bag or do I just put them directly in the bag that I brought with me. I mean, there's a multitude of examples where we generate plastic, you know, in our purchases and yeah, we don't have to, there's this, we, and so I, I discuss it often with around me because I think, I think there are many ways we can make a difference a little bit at a time, a little bit the, uh, yeah. So yeah, I think the plastic industry is kind of like the sugar industry, like sugar in America is unfortunately put in everything plastic similarly is also in everything when it doesn't need to be like it's some of it's completely unnecessary so I, I like that we're people like you and i are starting to talk about this and you know inspiring people to change Absolutely. and 
really not at anybody's inconvenience, right? Like once you understand these switches, it's, you're not going out of your way for anything. No, absolutely. And you can actually still use plastic. I mean, there's tons of plastic now made out of corn or algae and, and it just melts. You put in water, it just disappears. It just, and it becomes part of, so there's, there's alternative things that need to be made far more available. Yeah. Um, so absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I, I recently interviewed uh, Daniel, the founder of plant switch on my podcast, who's uh, so plant switch is a, a brand who's making cutlery and like single use plastic, like straws and takeout items made out of agave. So they feel like plastic. They perform like plastic. They're sturdy, but it's natural. It's biodegradable, like perfect, perfect. like no Absolutely. sacrifice of quality or anything. So Absolutely. there are options out there. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, okay. So we talked about 1% for the planet. What, what different categories are there on there? You mentioned ocean as one of them. Yeah, there's a variety. So I don't know uh, the whole. Well, which story. one did you pick? <laughs> it's big. Personally, I would I, I go uh, for the for the oceans. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm I'm a sailor. Uh, I love the oceans. I love being out on the water at night. You know, there's just under the stars. Um, and I just you know I think a lot of the Earth climate and and just life on Earth depends on the the survival of the oceans all of it you know whether we're talking about water levels or or phytoplankton or, or whatever or currents i mean there's i don't know exactly the percentage but you know mass coverage of the earth by with oceans and it's clearly uh essential so i'm i'm uh i love the oceans and this is this is probably where i would go there's many other ways you know uh but absolutely yeah yeah, the, yeah the that's ocean. that that's what i'm passionate about too the ocean for sure um yeah, and just going back to the the plastic pollution on the on the beaches. That's what like I hate that. I've I've had a a client who he used to host monthly beach cleanups, and it's like that's amazing that people are out doing that. But it's sad in another sense that we even have to do that in the first place, you know. But um, all right. So let's let's touch very briefly on the FSC certified wood because people think okay, he's a sustainable brand. He's not using plastic but he's using wood to create the products. Like I thought we needed trees and forests and, and stuff like that. So I, I know you mentioned it briefly, the, the forest stewardship council. Yeah. Um, I have their site pulled up right now and we don't have to go in depth, but I just want to let people know that the FSC certification is basically the gold standard for wood. So they say that uh, they're responsibly managed, socially beneficial, environmentally conscious, and economically viable. So, if you're going to make something out of wood, that's that's probably a, Try FSC. Yeah, yeah, a yeah, good absolutely. certification yeah. to have. Absolutely awesome. Yeah. So now I want to get into the. Hmm. I'm, I'm wondering if we should save this for the end. Let Let's get into a little bit of your personal background because in the intro, you mentioned. 25 years of traveling to over 50 different countries. That's incredible. Yeah, it's, it's been fun. It's been fun. It's been fun. I, uh, well, I was born in France, then I studied in the UK and then in Australia. And then I got a job for an American company to work in Africa and the Middle East. And, uh, and that was amazing. Amazing. I mean, I've, I've always been eager, you know, as a kid when, before joining the military or whatever, I, I, I traveled, I did a round the world tr trip and I was embarrassed to be French in the middle of the Pacific Ocean because at the time, I'm, I'm a pretty old guy, the French were doing um, atomic bomb testing in the, uh, in the middle of the Pacific on their islands. Mm -hmm. And I was in New Zealand, I was like embarrassed because you know, it was my country, theoretically, that was messing up with, with the ocean. They stopped since and pretty much, but I couldn't, I was, ashamed to be honest of, of that and so when people ask me oh you're french i said well no i'm citizen of the world you know <laughs> and and in fact you know every country no country is perfect clearly you can find you know so the point is to take your responsibility go for it and just to you know assume and um and so i, I traveled quite a bit africa middle east loved working with all the different religions ethnicities uh i uh i mean i got a i was in in Maasai land. I was in, in Kenya and I was working with the big bank there. The guy said, Oh, you want to, you want to 
do something for the kids. I'm a, and this, the Maasai are tall. I mean, these are warriors. They're really tall. And so the, this guy was the head of the bank. He was pretty tall. Took me out. We stop in the middle of the bush or middle of a small village, gets changed. And we end up in this village where um, the kids had nothing. And it was a Maasai village with the, with the ladies, with the, the, ear, the rings and everything. Mm. And I, it was fascinating to see the whole um, thing. And this, this albino kid came to me and he looked at me and said, oh, you've got the same disease as me, you're white. And I said, yeah, yeah, I do, I do, I have the same problem. And, uh, <laughs> and it was just a, it's just an example of what I've enjoyed in traveling. It's just, it opens up your mind, it opens up all the things that you can do and listen to. And I wanted to do that. So I traveled, you know, in the US back and forth. I came with my family here because I wanted to show my kids that there's much more than your little world, uh, wherever that may be, you know, and, uh, and it's just so important to open up. So I wanted them to see, to learn cultures, languages, and just have fun, you know, and, and that makes you more respectful, I think, as well, you know, when you start taking in, you know, and, and absorbing learning languages, listening, you know, different perspective. And for me, the environment really ties into that because the social responsibility is just being more aware of our environment. Uh, and it's, I think it's much more fun. Life is more fun. It's better for everyone. So anyway, Absolutely. so yeah, I've traveled a bit and, um, sorry, I'm going around a... <laughs> no, that, that's fine. You mentioned, uh, you're in the, in the military. I didn't know that. What branch? I was, um, a, a gendarme, a gendarmerie. So, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's like a military police, if you will. And, um, and yeah, I was actually an English teacher, believe it or not. So I would train you know, soldiers with a, a challenge, if they could speak proper English in the class, they would get a pint of Guinness at the end. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. That is, that is interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was, I was uh, in the United States military for, for the, the Marine Corps and something that's, you, you were talking about how you were kind of upset to, to be French when you find, found out that they were doing that. I was upset to be associated with the U S military when I would get on board their ships and I would, would see that they just dump the trash, right, right off the ship, right off the side. Uh, I was horrified. I was like, uh, like our own military is doing this. Like right. what? Um, so that was, that was really sad to see just barrels and barrels of plastic bags full of trash, but you know, there's nothing yeah. that I, could do about it oh exactly <laughs> uh, well now you are now you are doing something about it yeah, yeah yeah so military united states military if you're hearing this watching this right now uh <laughs> please stop like that's not good um I'm, I'm sure there's a better way i know that they burn some of it on the ship but there's yeah. some things that uh, like they're not allowed to burn and so it's got to go somewhere and they think the best place is overboard but Wow, absolutely. Well, waste in general is a challenge. It's a challenge for oh, a yeah. town. I mean, it's an expense. It's a challenge. It's a challenge for a ship. Imagine a ship is like, I mean, you know better than me, but it's a small world yep. that's completely autonomous. And waste is a challenge. You got to compress it, compact it. You got to, you know, and, and that's why when you reduce the waste, we're actually better off. You know, we're actually solving a bigger picture problem. So, yes. Um, yeah. So, that's anyway. something that, that people, don't think about the, I mentioned the overconsumption, same, you know, waste and overconsumption go hand in hand, because if you overconsume, you, you buy too much, that stuff goes to waste, especially if it's like single use plastics, where do you think that stuff goes? Like it's got to go somewhere yeah. and plastic, especially doesn't decompose, uh, for like a hundred or no, like a thousand plus years. Yeah. And even then it just gets smaller and smaller into microplastics, which are now, as you mentioned in, in the ocean, in the fish, we eat the fish, there's microplastics in us, there's health uh, negative side effects to that. So it's just, once we fix it at the source, which is what you're doing, not even yeah. using it to begin with. Um, but yeah, that's, that's a good point. Waste is a big issue. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's, once you get it, it's so much fun. I mean, it's, it's, there's, the alternatives are coming and it's there and there's so much good thing, so many good companies and good things going on. I'm excited. I'm super excited about what we're doing, but I want to keep pushing for it in my own little way with my creative educational products. And, uh, and I think, yeah, I think there's, you know, 
I, I clearly we we it's I'm very optimistic. I'm a I'm a super positive and optimistic person, so that's that helps. You know, I'm like ah, there's tons of plastic everywhere. No, no, yeah. we we're gonna figure it out. Well, here's a positive stat that I I saw on Instagram today. Uh, they estimate that up to 37 percent of the coral reefs were restored in 2020 for some reason you know there weren't as many um like i forget the word that they use not hurricane but something similar that stirs up the water and messes up the coral reefs and there was less um less rays in in uh temperature um yeah. for, for the ocean and i think that's a <laughs> i think that's one of the only benefits that came from everybody being locked down like less travel and less emissions so that was a, a positive um so that's a, yeah, a no. good piece of news yeah <laughs> so out of all your travels this i know this is probably gonna be hard is there a favorite place that you've been ah. um i didn't think of that you know it's hard i've loved many places a favorite place uh or top three I, let's say yeah so um I've loved Jordan. Jordan is a stunning mm. country with a mix of cultures and, and the, uh, the, the Arab world, even, even so Jordan, Morocco are amazing countries where I had a wonderful experience. Um, I, um, I love, I mean, Australia, I mean, you know, you know, I've all, I mean, I was in Sydney for a while and Australia is an amazing country. I mean, it's, uh, I absolutely love the nature, the people it's, it's, you know, it's what about Sydney. the spiders. Is that where you got the? Know, is that where you got the inspiration for that giant thing? Exactly, exactly. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> See, it's still running. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, yeah. Clearly, the wildlife there is is tricky. But um, um, no. Uh, what places? I mean, I love France. You know, I because I'm from there. There's a couple of little villages and places uh, that are absolutely stunning. Um, I think most I love, people when I they. Love the US. Sorry. I, I think most people when they think of France, they just automatically think Paris. I mean, myself included, because that's, you know, that's obviously the main city, but, you know, France is bigger than Paris. So what are some <laughs> of the like little lesser known, more natural, beautiful places in France? Oh, there's tons. I mean, you know, you got to I mean, and not just France, all of Europe, but in France, I would, you know, I'm, I'm a big fan of Brittany. So the 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 West Coast, the Atlantic Ocean, um, it's beautiful. It's um, a little less crowded than the Mediterranean coast um and little less expensive but it's it's nice and then the middle of the countryside is stunning as well so it's um it's uh, no it's it's a nice country a little bit like the us which has an amazing natural scene i mean landscape i love the us as a you know as a as a model as a country but also as the nature that's in there you know mm -hmm. it's it's just absolutely uh uh, you know, I've traveled through the U.S. and just the nature anywhere. So the third one, or, or the you know, an another one of the three would probably be the U.S. I, I enjoy it here. I've seen, I've had some good times here. Uh, how many states have you been to? Uh, I don't know, twenty-five. California. Yeah. Awesome. Where uh, at? Uh, I was uh, L.A., San Francisco. I traveled through Orange. Mm -hmm. uh i drove through california a few years back mm -hmm. when i went but uh yeah 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 so i'm i'm in kind of the la area uh orange county more orange county, so right? yeah you drove through there um i, I think it's beautiful here just the That's, beaches yeah. are pff, incredible but yeah you mentioned san francisco i think san francisco has unfortunately gone downhill because i loved san francisco growing up but now it's like the homelessness is becoming a real big problem there unfortunately I heard, yeah yeah I so it's, there, but i heard that yeah yeah, it, yeah it's sad but all right so now let's get into your creations I, I want to save this for last because i don't know it's just so exciting i want to to end with a bang you showed the glasses you showed the spider which right. again i'm going to say this if you're just listening to this you have to make a note to go back and watch the youtube version and also you have a youtube channel so go ahead yep. shout that out now uh eco wood art eco wood art on youtube uh, e-c-o-w-o-o-d-a-r-t eco wood art perfect and the videos are amazing like the <laughs> the amount of detail that goes into your projects is 
just mind blowing. Like you mentioned at the beginning, these are not like simple little things. They're oh, no. intricate. They are. They are. I mean, you got, you got, I mean, you got more. So this is, you know, this is like the, the puppy, uh, which also, you know, walks around, but you got more simple ones. You know, you got the, the cactus desk organizer. So mm. these are like, it's all, the principle is all laser cut wood. Right. And so, um, but then you can't, I can't show you that, but I have a whole solar system. Maybe you can get to see that. Oh, this man. is the whole solar system. And when you turn the handle, but all the nine planets that turn around their thing, that takes a little bit of time to put together. But uh, wow. But it's, they're, they're, so that's the whole point. You can create really fun educational products, you know, from a, from a tiny little fidget that's going to spin mm. and you can build or, or, or a big planetarium or, or even what I'm, I'm launching now. And I think they I think they're pretty cool. They're they're like um, wall decor items. So oh, I like, saw you that can, on your website. Yeah, yeah. And so you put that on the wall. You can paint. And what I'm excited about is actually to have to have people use that as a framework to become creative. Not just put it on the wall, whatever, but actually do paint pouring or paint or put pictures or mixed media or whatever. Wow. But really to inspire people to have fun and uh, and potentially as a classroom project. Actually, we're working with classes. So. I'm trying to make the, the junction between having a, a manual hands-on experience with sustainable material that really teaches that element and sort of bringing the kids to think about, oh, I can be creative too. Because ultimately, I'm, a, I'm a, again, I'm a big believer in creativity. I think, um, you know, we talk about AI all the time and how that's going to break. Well, it, my, I'm not an expert, but my understanding is that AI is really good at repeating tasks and learning from repeat tasks. But what makes mankind different is that we innovate, we create. And when we merge the different things, you know, Leonardo da Vinci is, I mean, one of my models is the Leonardo da Vinci tank. Oh well, this gosh. guy was way ahead. He was an artist. And what he did, he did what we call STEM or STEAM, science, technology, engineering, maths, and art, arts and maths. And it was all the sciences, if you will. And when you absorb and accept that these can work together. Uh, then you get into things like uh, biomimicry. I'm a big fan of biomimicry, which is replicating what, what nature has already figured out and trying to understand you know, how to resist to abrasion or to heat or to whatever. The, the textures they found are amazing. And so we, if we study nature, we can learn from that. And Leonardo da Vinci is a perfect example of what I love about STEAM is bringing the arts into the science world and, and vice versa and creating fun products that, that then you can paint, you can do, you can learn, you know, you, you can do a lot more things with it. And, um, and it's, yeah, it's more let's, fun. Let's stick on this topic because uh, I've said this in probably the past, I don't know, five or so podcasts, something about creativity. And I think it's so important and it's so lacking in Western society. And I think a lot of that goes back to our school system. And th this is why I love that you're working in the, in the educational world because the school system was created to, you know, to, to build workers for the factories where you just do the same thing over and over. You follow within the lines, you know, just that repetitive task, no creativity. That was good for back then when we needed the factory workers. But now there's almost no creative thinking that's taught in schools. You know, you're just taught to memorize things and yeah. just do it that way. And if you memorize the answer, you'll get the, the test, you know, you'll get a good grade. But, but it's short-term memory. In reality, yeah. when you the year later, when you ask teens or <laughs> or whoever, did you nobody remember? remember nobody no way. Remembers. I don't no remember way. any of that. Exactly. What you do remember is how to solve problems, like and not just the way that they're teaching you. Because a lot of times I'd ask, well, how about if we do it this way? And they just said, nope, don't don't worry about that. Just this is the way that we do it. And it's, in my head, I was like, well, why? Like if you come up with the same answer or better, why could we not do it that way? Oh, because it's standardized on the test. Yeah. So what? Like, uh, so uh, talk to us a little bit about creativity and why it's important for kids to be creative. And also, like, as we started with the quote, why it's important to actually, you know, be hands on with the creativity. Um. Well, you know, talking of quotes, I mean, I told you I'm in Princeton, New Jersey, and this is somewhat known because I, uh, uh, partly because Albert Einstein was here and uh, amongst other things. And uh, and one of the things he, he said is uh, um, uh, 
uh, and I, about creativity. Creativity is intelligence having fun. And for me, I love how, you know, creativity is intelligence having fun. And it's, it's I love the junction, the junction, the, the, the crossing point of, of, you know, you, it, it's fun. It is really fun. So um, I think, you know, if, if you keep on obviously, you know, repeating the same thing and you fail, well, you know, you might want to change what you're doing and stop being creative. Uh, and so, uh, and that's, that's where the entrepreneur your life comes in because every day I got to figure out something uh, and, um, and be true. And, and so, yeah, absolutely. I've seen, I've worked with artists all over, you know, all kinds in my recent years. And I, I love how uh, creativity people say, Oh, I'm not creative. I don't know how to do it. Well, yeah, you are creative. If you know how to cook, you know, you are creative. If you know how to, you know, whatever, there's creativity in every aspect, garden, you know, there's so, it's not just painting or, or recording a song. Mm. Uh, there's, just, there's just so many other ways to be creative. Yeah, I, I'm, I finished reading The Art of Impossible by Stephen Kotler, which, which talks about peak performance. And a big part of peak performance is creativity and cultivating that creativity. And he mentioned in the book that kids are very creative. I, I forget exactly who it was, but somebody, uh, I think they worked for NASA. They created a test to, to study creativity and they found that kids would score like the perfect score. And then that declined as we age. And part of why we decline is just natural. Like our creativity naturally goes as we age, but also it was like, I mentioned the school system. That was part of why it declines because, because we're not taught, you know, yeah. creative thinking. Absolutely. So, and then you also mentioned fun, which I think is hugely missing in most adults, you know, just everyday life. You know, people say, oh, grow up. You're an adult now, like as if we can't have fun as adults. Like, so I'm curious, what is your or who is your um, what's the right way to say this? Like most popular customer, I guess, like what what age range? Um, just want to come back on the creativity when you say yeah. you know, about the curve. I've actually, the, the, what I've seen is that the curve of creativity, you're right, the kids are far more creative. But if you were to put the age and the, um, and over time, you know, the age group, the kids are far more creative at the level of creativity. The kids are really creative. And then around whatever, 30, 40, we're busy. We've got our careers, our life, our kids, whatever. The creativity comes down. Lack of time, lack of focus, more stress, whatever. But it actually picks up. It's really interesting when the either more financial wealth or more time as you retire, actually the creativity comes back. And mm -hmm. there's a lot of communities I know in the painting world, a lot of uh, seniors who pick up painting, uh, I know in Florida, for instance, where they love, you know, doing painting and it comes back up. And a lot of my customers actually are also people who have time and are dedicated and very uh, careful about putting together. I have a, several guys who build these models and send me pictures, tons of pictures, and they're amazing. They, they pick the hardest truck models and things with the engine. So some of the models I have, you actually see the pistons and the engine move. Wow. And they, there's two gears forward, one gear, and there's no battery, no glue. You know, you all snap it together. The engineering is, is pretty good. Uh, wow. And so, and these guys, they're fun and they have time and they build this for the, for the pleasure. So back to creativity, I think actually you, you, there's, I, maybe NASA knows better, but I think it picks up better also later when you're, when you have more time. When you well, I, I think what they were more saying is that just naturally your brain becomes less, yeah. less creative as yeah. you age, which I can see like as a kid, you know, you're thinking these crazy things, you know, just wild thoughts. So naturally that does decrease. But I think what you're talking about is not so much, it has nothing to do with the brain. I think that it has to do with like you mentioned, with the time and stress, people people get so caught up in their work, which you know me working with entrepreneurs, they're so focused on their work, which is a good thing because I'm I'm working with impact driven entrepreneurs, but at the same time, you have to make time for yourself because yeah. in order to have a successful business, you have to be balanced in your own life, and a big part of that is creativity and fun. So I think. I think that the the creativity curve doesn't have to dip at all. I think it can just have a maybe gradual slope yeah. down um, as long as you do creative things and have fun and play and move. And 
Uh, it's just it, absolutely we're just so serious and stressed out it's it's unfortunate and i love that you've got a wide range of, of people getting the products yeah so there's a wide range they i mean they're 14 and above so really you know even the smaller ones i mean i got this little you know little uh, fidget I, there's a oh, whole is that array a buffalo? Little, sorry is that a buffalo that's a yeah that's a little buffalo yeah that's so cool and, and you got a little uh, little wing there's a little car there's a whole bunch of little fidgets uh, and they, they're just fun, you know, you can, you, you snap them together, but even these guys are not that easy. So everything is like 14 and above because they're small pieces, you know, choking has it. Um, but uh, they, there's a whole variety of, of things. And, uh, and I, I, I think, and I have tons of ideas. So it's, it's not going to stop anytime soon. <laughs> okay. Before we get into the ideas and your vision for art venture, how many different levels of difficulty are there? Because I see on the website that there's like a, a thing where you can check to see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I have, I can show you. So I have one here. This is called, this is the globe. Okay. Uh, for example, that this, this guy, I don't have it built here, but it's, this is big. This is really big. And in the back, you have uh, five different levels of complexity. Oh man. So, so that's um, pretty close to the end. Yeah. 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 So you have different levels and, um, yeah, so that so that you know, but even the the easier one, you got to be careful. So there's really cool YouTube videos on the the trick is because there's no glue. Yeah, you gotta and you have all these little gears. You got to use wax, paraffin wax, to put on the gears so that they turn smoothly. And then mm. sandpaper. The boxes come with a little piece of sandpaper. Uh, they, they most of them have the you know little toothpicks to put it together, and then sandpaper and a little bit of wax. So everything's in the box basically. Wow. So what what's like an example of level five? What's level five? Level difficulty? five is that like the solar system? Level five is gonna be. Oh this, my goodness gracious! This guy, this guy. So I don't know. You know, I got a mic here, but basically, so when I turn this, you got the whole every single. Oh, that's gonna work. Every single planet that's turning at the same time at its own speed, and then you've got tons of little um, educational writing. There's tons of you know things that explain the solar system so this took me a while to put together this i can is imagine <laughs> is uh is the the turning is that at scale but yeah it's actually you know the, the the you have all the gears that replicate the the so it takes you i don't know how many turns to actually get uh, uh neptune to go around because that takes so much more time so it is at scale yeah, yeah. wow yeah. I'm, I'm speechless. That, that is incredible. <laughs> no, yeah, some some of them are, are cool, are fun. And, how and, many? You know, a, no, go ahead. No, there's a, there's another one that I love as well. I don't have it here, but uh, I just gave it to a friend. It's a, it's a dollhouse, right? So mm -hmm. we made a now dollhouse, you know, because a lot of these are mostly sort of engineering, mechanical, you know, and they were. And I thought, okay, we, we need something, you know, for the, for the girls and for, and, uh, and a little more feminine. And so we built this dollhouse and it's cool because you, you've got really little furniture and everything. You can paint it and customize it, but you got this mechanical elevator that actually goes up and down in the, in the house. It's just, everything has a little trick. It's not just a normal, you know, product. So anyway. Yeah. So this thought just came to me because I record these on zoom. I think that I can share my screen and that you guys can see what we're talking about on the YouTube video. Let's try this. This is going to be my first time uh, doing this. So bear with me here. Here we go. Can you see the screen? Yeah, that works. Awesome. Yeah. So check this out. These are all the products. Yeah. So there's a whole variety. Uh, wow. You got a foosball table. Foosball table. That's, this is the Da Vinci tank. So oh my Leonardo goodness. A da trebuchet. Yeah, yeah, you can shoot your your buddies in the office. There's those glasses. Yeah, there's a whole. Oh my goodness! So there's a game. There's set the dollhouse you were talking here. about. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, a little toothpick dispenser. This is called the game set. You got chess, checkers, and uh, battle games. So you got they they're all uh, the globe that I showed you has a little secret compartment. They, yep, yeah, there it is. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, so then I've got a lot of animal triceratops, turtle, if you animal, so you've got to, I showed you the spider. Yeah, uh, there it is. So there's, but there's, triceratops. Uh, you know, there's, so the spider, you can actually, there's a video on there. If you, if you, you might be able to uh, show it to your uh, viewers, if you click along the, the yeah, exactly. 
somewhere there should be an image video but oh there you go yeah it's playing right now yeah so it shows you how the you know but it's uh, it's it's just fun they now they they take time to put together i mean you you think you know a couple of weekends or whatever but uh wow so yeah so uh, it's 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 um it's a fun thing and 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 i work i'm working with a uh, steam steam and stem teachers uh, so these are new puzzles. They're really cool because the, some of the, most of the pieces have the shape are of animals. actual animals. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And they come in a really neat box and everything. So it's like, you know, that different. is attention to detail. That's a, yeah. And that's a German designer, a guy who was doing these paintings. And then we partnered with him and we said, you know, these really cool. They're, they're different. They're not just a classic puzzle. Yeah. So that's yeah, awesome. Yeah. Let's go to the the wall decor that you were mentioning. Wall decor. So you got all these, you know, uh, things that you build, you snap them together. And that's a two dimensional, but then you can. I need this one for California. Absolutely. <laughs> Bear. <laughs> Absolutely. Wow. Yeah. And then you're, you're trying to uh, get people to like paint them or well, like that's the do point. something. Imagine okay. the, exactly. Imagine the solar system. So you get different kids to put together little pieces so you're going to work on this and that planet and then you put it together and you say okay now what color are they so you're going to start painting or and then right inside the surface you know some scientific data the diameter the speed the rotation the you start the distance from earth i don't know you know so mm -hmm. it's you use that as a project for the class and then you put it on the wall of the classroom and say look at this beautiful piece of work we did that together uh, artists, I mean, I, I worked with a lot of artists who do paint pouring. So you, I don't know if you're familiar with that, but you got all yep. these funky effects. Well, you can do that with these, you know, you start having some funky uh, colors and things. So these are the little fidgets, little guys that I was showing you, you know, you can, one of my preferred is clearly is this, this guy where you, where you just turn the maxi fidget. Yeah. Yep. That's, that's a fun. Wow. Yeah. And then the, and, and then uh, stationary, I, stationary. So I told you, you know, my little, uh, couple of uh you know wow organizers you got the bear you wanted a bear you got two bears <laughs> very cool yeah and it's i mean you can't really tell on this on the side on the video but i can show you right you see the thing i mean this is next to my head you see that's this big. is not just not just a little uh you know thing that you put on the it's it's pretty it's serious <laughs> yeah that's good size <laughs> so who comes up with all these designs is that you do you have a we team work that with does the, that? We work with yeah, I work with designers uh, who you know who help me. We share ideas. I give them some. They they but they're mm -hmm. really uh, we we got a really good team. Okay, so yeah. let's talk about the future. What is what is your vision for our adventure? What are you excited about? Ah, uh, what am I excited about about tomorrow? Uh, I'm excited about customers. You know, I'm starting. I'm I'm really small. You know, this is. I, so I was, I'm still shipping it this morning. I was shipping from my garage and, uh, but now it's picking up so much that now I've got a, whatever they call it, 3PL. So a platform that's going to ship for me to customers. And I love that customers love the products and they reorder, uh, art stores, uh, toy stores, uh, but art stores are, are getting it. They're seeing, oh yeah, you know, that actually makes sense. Mm -hmm. I can not just sell art material, but also touch on the science, uh, working with schools. I love working with with teachers in school. It's it's fun. I think there's just so much fun things that we can create, and um, so the future. Well, I can't tell you too much right now. Okay. <laughs> Hopefully, maybe I'll come back. Give us a, give us a little a, a little sneak peek. A, a, a little sneak peek. Um, Something. Creative education uh, is really important. Not just toys. Some of these, you know, you, you think, okay, you know what, there's, you know, this is just a toy, but I actually believe that um, there's a real missed opportunity in everything that's creative tools. And um, I would love to find a way to replace all the plastic that you find in every educational product, uh, whether it's biology or whatever, and replace that with sustainable products. Uh, in the future, I also see that wood is good, but there's other sustainable materials uh metal is one of them you know steel is one of them there's kind of a debate around aluminum but you know as well um i'm right now i'm focusing on uh, laser uh, laser cutting but you know there's also other 
things in the pipeline that are happening. So I, you know, uh, 3D printing and things like this. So I have a, the array can be uh, in a variety of products, in the material, um, and, uh, you know, beyond, beyond the US. So absolutely. Wow. Very exciting stuff. I'm, <laughs> it's already super cool. I'm, I'm very excited to see what the future holds for Art Venture. Um, Thank you. Well, Thank you, Taylor. Edward, this has been a fantastic conversation. I, I truly enjoyed it very much. I enjoy the products. I enjoy your mission, your vision, everything you've got going on at Art Venture. So tell people where they can find more about you and what you're doing. Um, so you can go to my website, uh, which is www.myartventure.com, uh, M-Y-A-R-T, venture.com. Well, I guess this one with my, uh, and, um, and you'll see, you know, you'll see the products, uh, you'll see, you'll have my details, reach out. I am, you know, looking for partners. I mean, whether it's schools, teachers who want to have fun, artists, I'm looking for retailers, of course, you know, uh, online and, and brick and mortar. I want to, I want to partner with museums. Uh, I want to create things that are unique because of the technology. I want to work with artists or companies that say, you know what, why don't you make, I don't know, uh, glasses that are, that have not just my logo, but are, are designed for me, you know, and things mm -hmm. like this. So I think this, these are the things that I, you know, I'm open to, um, and just, uh, just having fun and spreading the message on sustainability and, uh, you know, trying to get that across. <laughs> Love it. All right, guys. Well, everything that we referenced to on today's show, the YouTube channel, the website, all of it will be linked in the show notes. So you can just go ahead and, and click on the description. If the YouTube video or show notes of the podcast, you'll find links to everything. Um, well, Edward, this, <laughs> this was really you. fun. Like I, I know I said that, but <laughs> truly this was fun. Um, and I know that's something that you're, you're passionate about is, you know, fun and creativity and it shows. It definitely shows. I really and appreciate it. The best part of it is that it's sustainable. Yeah, absolutely. Super cool. All right. Really, thank you very much. Thank very you for coming on. Later.